All right. So if you'll allow me, I'm in the mood to focus on our baptism today. Uh, it's, it's just one of those weekends. And uh, it's a pretty great occasion to baptize on Christ the King Sunday. So parents and godparents, this shouldn't be too hard to remember. You should celebrate Arlie's baptismal anniversary when we start getting Christmas decorations up, right around Thanksgiving or so. Uh, after all, as I said, Advent begins in a week. Now, for those of you that come to the 930 Mass often, you've heard my favorite parts of baptism. I tend to repeat them every time. The light of Christ. The prayer for strength. The fact that we all renew our faith together on the occasion of baptism. But today, I'm going to share a thing or two that's a little more advanced while the opportunity is presenting itself and I have baptisms on the brain. For starters, we have this from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Baptism is the sacrament of faith, as we read in the last chapter of the Gospel of Mark. The faith required for baptism is not a perfect and mature faith, but a beginning that is called to develop. For the baptized, children and adults, faith must grow after baptism. Preparation for baptism leads only to a threshold to new life. So what that means is that we realize that baptism is a joyful event, but it's not enough on its own. Baptism is a threshold, a door into a larger world. And once you begin along that path of Christ, you stand to inherit everything. Absolutely everything that really matters. But it requires faith. And an immature and imperfect faith is enough to get started. You know, dare I say that might be the going rate for most people. But whether or not that's the case, none of this really works without faith. Without trust in the Lord, without the belief that God actually does love you beyond all telling. The rest of this will fall short without that. When we celebrate a baptism, we celebrate faith itself. Okay, for the baby, for the parents, godparents, for all of us. And with the grace of God, our love for Christ and one another will grow as a result. So it's the beginning of something larger. Great. The other thing we need to take time to understand is the uniqueness of baptism. For you see, a sacrament is an outward sign of inner grace. That's the definition of a sacrament, outward sign of inner grace. And that means that what we see isn't as important as what we can't see. For baptism, what we see is the water, and what we hear are the words, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Those are the outward components. But it's not really about the water or the words. It's about the salvation of God at work in our lives. And this can be taken for granted. I, uh, I have a close friend of mine from Peace Corps. Uh, she was my closest friend at the time. And uh, now she's a Christian psychiatrist uh, somewhere in Texas. Well, we met for lunch a couple of years back when she was visiting Wisconsin for some reason. And uh, we were chatting, and she mentioned that her church does not value infant baptisms. Baptism has to involve saying yes to God, according to their church, which makes a certain amount of sense. I see where they're coming from on that way. Uh, but do you know what they call Catholics who are baptized as infants? They call us wet sinners, <laughs> at least until we make a personal devotion to Christ. And I can laugh at that a little bit, even though that's not fair. But that's not really the way it works. See, that's the thing. Baptism configures or conforms someone to Christ. That is right from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verse 29. It's, it's not actually about saying yes. It's about God's care for our salvation. 
that care or grace from God gives us what's called an indelible spiritual mark. That means that no sin of any kind can erase this mark because sin is not more powerful than the love of God. And for that reason, then, there is never any cause at all to validly baptize the same person twice. When someone gets baptized a second time, what they're doing is they're focusing on the visible part of the ritual, not the spiritual part of God's salvation and love. So the only thing they're doing is they're indirectly and unintentionally expressing a disbelief that God has truly loved them since before they were born. I'm serious here. If your belief in God is healthy and informed and reasonable, I hope that you realize the fact that a second baptism is illogical. A a second baptism is only logical if God isn't really a part of the process. If baptism is just a human dedication ritual and nothing more, okay, well, yeah, fine, you could repeat that, I guess. Or, heaven forbid, baptism is a political statement. (laughs) Don't even want to think about that. But, see, that's not the case, because in that case, God is not a part of the baptism, and therefore it's not a ritual of faith. You can't have a ritual of faith without God. Now, I I hope that I'm not making any of you angry, guilty, or nervous. That's not not my intention. Every once in a while, I have to deal with this, normally with wedding preparation, where someone's baptized twice. And I say, don't worry about that second baptism. It's okay. The first baptism, that's all the paperwork I need. You know, for Catholics, Catholics are normally not the ones who baptize twice. But every once in a while, we have a preemie baby. They get emergency baptized in the hospital. And then when they come back to church, you know, with stronger health, then they're baptized in the church. I mean, I see where parents would make that decision. But as a priest, it's my responsibility to explain to those parents, don't worry about that second one. That second baptism didn't do anything that didn't already happen in the first baptism. That's why we only baptize once. If it's done correctly, one baptism does everything it possibly can because God's the one doing the work. I want you to understand your faith as best you can, and Mass on Sunday is the best time to hear this stuff. When we're baptized, the Holy Spirit marks us with the seal of the Lord. God is in our lives in a new and radical way, not because of anything we've done, but because God so loved the world that he gave us his only son, Jesus Christ. Baptism is our participation in that divine love, and I pray that you can feel that divine love whenever we gather around the font for the sake of a new life being welcomed into Christ's church. And as I said last week, we're going to have plenty of practice between now and Christmas. Thanks be to God.